It's Madden NFL 22, and the question is, are you ready for some football? It's the Browns and the Huskies, and it comes your way next. EA Sports coverage of the National Football League is on the air. The scene a few moments ago, here it is. It's unlike any other in sport as both teams made their way out of the tunnel. These folks are fired up as their guys are ready to do battle with the Cleveland Browns. <laughs> Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. And Charles, we look at this Toronto ball club as they enter play here. They come in off a loss last Along with Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. And Charles, you look at our visitors coming into play here. Their offense is one that doesn't rely too heavily on just one guy. They like to spread things around as best they can. You're right about that. It's a diverse unit. And they like to run their offense by what they call game plan, meaning each and every week they study the opponent, they probe its weaknesses, on, and they move the Let's ball go. around that way. They you, emphasize baby. who's going to get it based on what they think they'll accomplish in that game. Other teams, they're a system team. They're going to run what they run no matter what. I like this style of offense. It suits them well. This is the Oklahoma State alum, Chris Carson. And he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. The numbers on the ground for Carson last week, 21 carries, 86 yards. And as we discovered in talking with the coaching staff prior to the game, going up against a team that struggled against the run has only emboldened them to run the football more. I expect 40 to 50 carries in this game. And he's taken down, but not before reaching the 10-yard line. A big play there on the catch and run. Of course, the catch was nice, but how about what happened after? We're able to stay on his feet and gain all that additional yardage. So many of these slot guys, I think, have running back in their background. Opening minute and already a trip to the red zone. They've got a first and 10 from the 10. They're passing here, Joe Burrow. And they'll lose yardage here. They go backwards to the 13-yard line. But despite the completion, they're going to wind up losing three there. Second down. And that's a great job of tackling right there. If he could have made the first man miss, maybe he could have taken it into the end zone. Instead, they stopped him pretty well right in his tracks. And you often see that in the red zone. Offense has to be quick. In this case, the defense was quicker. They go back to Carson here on second. And now they're inside the 10 as he's brought down at the 9. Yeah, It'll be a five-yard pickup there. So from second and 13, they're back to a more manageable third and eight. Let's go, let's go. Both folks to Mike. Mike's both folks. Burrow will throw. Now he tries to force it in, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Pat Sertan. And a short return to the yeah, six-yard yeah, line. Yeah. So out comes the offense now with a long field ahead of them. And trotting out there, their tall quarterback standing at 6-5. He had the numbers of a game last week that if you win, you talk about him being a gritty guy, managing the game, getting it done. But they lost. So obviously two interceptions, one touchdown pass, that's not going to be good enough. Got to get that changed around. And a gain of about four here moves this from the 6 up to the 10. Defensively here, you're facing a top five team in terms of points scored in the NFL. So when they're that high powered, you've got to find a way to hold them under 20. Because to me, that's the magic number. 20 points score gives yourself your, you give yourself your best chance to win. So if they're up around 24, 28, 30, they could be in some trouble. And I think so, because then you turn it into a shootout. And that means your offense has to keep pace. Now a throw here to his running back. He's at the 50. He's at the 30. 10, 5, and touchdown! Yeah. 
Anthony Schwartz, an even 90 yards. And the Huskies on just two plays have taken the lead. Extra point by McPherson, up and good. And that makes the score 7-0. Pretty clean and simple there. Just two plays, the long pass resulting in the touchdown on play number two. So look at this. They got the 7-0 lead in the pocket, and they're going to try an onside kick. And the Browns are able to cover this one up. So an onside kick fail in the Good first boy, quarter. Not sure I completely see the logic there. It's not apparent, is it? You almost have to go deeper, I think, and maybe... If we try and work along with them and, and speculate a little bit here, they must feel like they need to steal possessions in this game. And maybe they don't match up possession for possession with the opposite team. They've got to steal it and try and gain an advantage. And they Now Burrow loses the football. And this is picked up by the defense. There he goes right side. And he is not quite going to make it all the way in. They'll mark him down right about the one-yard line. I think what we just saw there with that fumble return is the increased emphasis on taking the ball away from another team. And no one wants to just fall on in football anymore, do they? They want to take it and try and score themselves. But when you fall, and he'll get in. He's over for the touchdown. Trying to go to work. It's their quarterback keeping it himself from a yard out. And the Huskies are able to strike quickly to add on to their lead. Extra point by McPherson, up and good, and it's now 14 to nothing. Well, not content with the first quarter lead, I guess. They're going to go onside kick. And the Browns are able to cover this one up. And that's why you have your hand team out there on the field. Those are the best guys ready to make that play. And let's face it. It was executed well. It wasn't a bad kick. It wasn't anything like that. Just that the normal outcome actually came to play. Analytics will tell you it's a very low possibility of getting the ball for the team kicking it in an onside kick situation. You're all about the numbers, aren't you? All about the numbers, baby. It's a new game now. They don't lie. Give them a couple on the carry there. Second and eight. Here's Carson. And he'll go down at the 28. That's it, baby. We go. Well, you're down early. How do you get back in the game? Maybe establish the run. I think they're trying to do that. Now I'm with you on that one. And what I like about the message is that there's no panic from the head coach. He's already told his offense coordinator, let's run the football. Let's get things settled down a little bit and find our way back into this game. On second down now, it's Carson. Oh, what a move. Usually we see runs like this as the defense breaks down later in the game, but this guy is setting the tone early, running through all types of tackles and putting the defense back on its heels. He's got Tunyon complete over the middle. Down to the six-yard line on a pickup of six as he gets halfway to the goal line. Second and four. They can still get a first down without scoring. Here's Burrow. A loss of eight that time, and it brings up third down. Get him, boy! Get him, boy! And play is stopped here. Timeout. It's the defense calling the timeout here. They'll have two remaining as we step aside here in this first quarter. And the defense, they'll spread the field a dime package here on third and 12. Out of the gun, it's Burrow. A pass underneath for Carson, and he'll be tackled right on the 10, well short of the first down. And now we're going to get a timeout here called by the defense. And that's their second charge timeout here in this first quarter. They're down to one remaining. The kick by Pinheiro is good, and they will get themselves on the board here at 14-3. 
Alberto. He's been automatic to this point of the season, and he connects on the field goal there. And what a luxury it is to have a kicker you can depend upon, partner, because he hasn't missed all year long. Converts on that one as well. And kudos to you. You didn't jinx him. After the field goal, on to kick it away is Pinheiro. And this is going to be returned from the middle of the end zone. And they're going to have poor starting field oh, position yeah, as he's out of bounds go. at his 10-yard line. Anytime you feel the kickoff inside your own end zone, you've got to be decisive about whether you're bringing it out or not. Sometimes that indecision can really cost you. That may have been what happened on that play. The offense now at the line, ready for their next drive. And right now they're saying, hey, let's keep this going. Two drives, two touchdowns. Yeah, can't ask for a better start than that, can you? I mean, this is the way you practice it. This is the way you rehearse it. But right now, the play calling, they're locked in really well. Eight yards the gain on that last run. Here's second and a couple. He'll look to throw. And he will find his man, Schwartz. That's complete. And they work this well upfield across the 45. Back to throw now on first down. And he's going to have the hook up to Schwartz. And they're able to work this to the 25 before it's all said and done. They'll run on first down. Moore. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down. Second and right at a yard. Second and one. And it's caught. Touchdown. Anthony Schwartz with his second touchdown in this opening quarter. And the Huskies are able to add on to that lead. I'll let you do the analysis, partner, but with every touchdown pass this young quarterback throws and with the success that his team has had, I just continue to be more and more impressed. Let's both do the analysis. Impressed. Aren't we both? Yeah. I mean, and why shouldn't we be? We've seen him improve throughout the year. We've seen him settle in now, and you can see the confidence of the team has grown. His confidence has grown. I think that everyone around this guy feels good about what they've seen, and it's also safe for him when he's driving home to turn on Sports Talk Radio. He's okay. And the Browns are able to cover this one up. The risk-reward of the onside kick go, when you boys, don't get it, the risk comes out to play, and here they gave up great field position. And that's the key to everything because you're trying your best to press advantages when you have them, and field position there leads you, you to that type hey. of play calling, and whether you want to blitz or whether you want to throw the ball deep, those types of things, that they've given up that type of field position, the advantage is switched to their opponent. And nothing much materializing there on the first down run. He'll get a couple, and that's it. The last run good for two. Here's second and eight. From the shotgun, Joe Burrow. That's complete. It's Chris Godwin. And he works it past the 30, almost to the 25. 21 to three is your score after one. On first and 10, Joe Burrow. 
That is caught. It's the tight end, Tunyon. And finally, go. down he Here goes go. as they work Here it inside the 10 to the 7. Now, that's the kind of big play you'd like to see. This first half, it hasn't gone their way, and they could use a shot in the arm, something to perk them up a bit. And they get one here in the passing game. Now it's Burrow. Uh, he's got it. Touchdown, Browns. It's all good, baby. It's all good. Robert Tunyon, his sixth touchdown of the season. And the Browns get a score closer. The big fellow was the recipient there for that touchdown pass, and it seems like more and more the tight end is the guy you have to worry about most in the passing game. Eddie Pinheiro now for the extra point. It's up and good, and the lead is down now at 11. It's 21 to 10. Just a four-play drive that time, and it's capped off by the Browns' touchdown. Now after the touchdown, here's Pinheiro to kick it off. Taking it about the one. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. Get ready, get ready, get ready. Here comes a field general leading his offense back out there for the next position. Back out there at the line, ready for their next pretty good doesn't it it certainly does touchdown touchdown touch much better than that they've got to feel very good about the groove that they're in at this stage of the game they'll try and start this drive in the air escaping the pressure right and he'll just get rid of it oh i like that right there not only was it the right play throwing it away like that Frankly, I think it was the only play. Yeah, got outside of the pocket, realized he had nothing, just chucked it free. Yeah, lived to fight another down, right? Here's second and ten. They'll look to throw here. And he's got the hook up to Moore. And he's able to get out to the 32, brought down there. Nine yards, not quite enough, and they'll be left now with third and one. And at his size, he's a smaller back. You can get him to football. He can kind of get lost, make someone miss. It's good for him. Yeah, it's great for him. I like what you said there. Sometimes he gets lost in the traffic a little bit. But get him out in the open field into some space. That plays to his strengths the best. Come on, and keeps him Let's out of go. it where all the big boys are, you know, make him make someone miss in the open field. So the big play gets him all the way down to the outskirts of the red zone here for first and ten. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. Looking left side, it's complete. He's got it. Second and two. Back to throw again. And it's caught. Touchdown. Anthony Schwartz on his way to a monster game. Three first half touchdowns. And the Huskies are able to extend their lead. Well, I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, but his top two options were not available on that throw, so he went the safe route, worked out pretty well. It was like you were in the pocket. How about you going through the progressions <laughs> like that? What a lot of offenses say, touchdown to check down. Look downfield first, bring it back to the line of scrimmage. Not easy for a rookie to do. Oftentimes they get one look, and they make their decision off of that. He went through three. That was impressive. McPherson now for the extra point. 
And the lead is up to 18 now. The drive summary that time, five plays. Boy, I guess they're going to keep trying to put the pedal to the metal here. They're going to try an onside kick. And the Browns are able to cover this one up. A second quarter onside kick Let's there go, that boy, failed. Is that something that maybe they had dialed up before this game started? It feels like it, doesn't it? That they thought they had the right situation, you know, and, and the right approach and going after it also may signal that they feel like they have the superior team, that they can try these sorts of things and it won't come back and hurt them later. Joe Burrow trots out again with the rest of his offense. He's had a solid start to this game, but bottom line is they're losing, so he doesn't care about his stats. He just wants to right the ship on the score. And he's going to be sacked. They sack him back right at the midfield stripe. Micah Parsons in there yet again. What else is new? He continues to rewrite the record book in single season sacks. Let's go. From midfield now, Burrow. He'll find Paris Campbell. That's complete. And he's out of bounds as he gets this down to the 45. That catch good for five. It's third down. Now it's Burrow. And the throw there going to be incomplete. They certainly had good starting field position on that drive, but couldn't do anything with it after three plays. Have to admit that that's a disappointing end to excellent field position. When that drive started, they had six points that they were thinking about. And this one sails out of bounds. I think it'll be inside the 25, and it will. 24-yard line is where they'll spot it. Toronto's offense ready to take over. And that last drive, a long drive, but not just that. They had a great air attack going. Do they stick with that? I would think that they would because if they were confident enough to do it on the last drive, starting backed up in their own territory, why would you change anything? They've got to be confident about what they're presenting and continue to do so. Yeah, because the secondary, they really look clueless. And that was amazing because that drive went and went. No adjustments and no big plays by the defense to knock the ball away. Second and 14. Looking left side, that's caught by Moore. And they'll take him down at the 31-yard line. That's what I'm talking about. Nice hit, boy. 53 to Mike. And he's able to get the first before he's taken down Let's at go. the 36. Now whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. And with that, they're now out of timeouts and still plenty of time remaining here in this second quarter. They'll look to throw here on first down. Flushed out right, and he wisely will throw that one away. Something of a rare incompletion. Remember, Charles, last week under 50% throwing the football. That's what he was, but he has turned that around in this game. But last week was what's commonly known as a fluke. For him to be under 50%, not normal, not the usual. But to be up over 80%, that's extra time in practice, and that's throwing with extra confidence as well. He wasn't ready. He wasn't ready. They'll look to throw again. Got a man at Schwartz complete. Touchdown! Anthony yeah, Schwartz on his way to a historic performance. Four first-half touchdowns. And the Huskies continue to pull away here in this first half. Extra point by McPherson, up and good. And the route is on here in this first half.
So after the made field goal, here's McPherson to send this one away. Eskridge going to keep this one in the end zone, go, and they'll start at the 25-yard line. The Browns offense trotting back onto the field. And they're coming off a three and out, my friend. I think they've got to look at that play sheet and go to a spot that they haven't gone before. Time to shake things up a little bit to try and get this offense moving. Okay, so how do you do that? How do you shake things up? You look at what you've called before, realize it hasn't worked <laughs> go to so something well, else. and maybe you try and find one of those special plays from one of your better players and maybe try and hit something big and get things going in the excitement area. They'll start out on the ground with Carson. And he's going to be dropped following a pickup of seven past the 30 to the 32. You don't want no problems with me. And we've hit the two-minute mark in this first double half tight, of action. Four down, four down. Gun, gun. A reminder, once we hit halftime, as we do all season, we'll send it down to Jonathan Coachman in Orlando. He'll have all the stats and scores from games in progress around the NFL. The best multitasker in the business, the coach. The Burroughs throw complete here on target to Tunyon. And he gets this to the other side of midfield across the 45 okay, before okay. going out. A big play that time on the catch and run. Here we go. Come on. Stop. Stop. They will throw on first down with Burrow. Let's go. And that is going to be incomplete as he led him a bit too much. To this point, I've been impressed with the work defensively. They have not allowed a lot of receivers to run free. And there's another example, another incompletion. Second and ten, a very chilly day here, but no snow. And You should see Charles' face. He's looking at me like I'm crazy. Now a nice throw here right side. He hauls it in. And he's down inside the five at the four before he's out of bounds. A big play there on the catch and run. What a dimension this man brings to this defense. He had his mind set there that he was going to get in and make that tackle. He really flew to the football. This is first and goal and a golden chance to get a score back here before halftime. Here's Burrow. And it's caught. They'll contain him to just four. Second down. Never make the mistake that the slot receivers, especially the little guys like we're watching here, are just quicker than fast. A lot of them combine quickness and speed. And he's in. Touchdown, Browns. Chris Carson with touchdown number eight on the year. And the Browns make some inroads here on that deficit. So it was the passing game that got him down here, but closer to the goal line, it's the running game that gets him home. Certainly appears that they lulled the defense into thinking that the passing game was going to be it the entire drive. Nice change up there going to the running game to get him over the goal line. Pinheiro now to add the extra point. And that'll cut the lead down now to 18. So that drives six plays, 75 yards. And it was all capped off by the Chris Carson touchdown run. Now after the touchdown, here's Pinheiro to kick it off. From the six. And they'll get him down inside the 30 at the 27. Let's go, boy. Bring it up. Now here's the signal caller getting ready to lead this offense again. He's got to be feeling pretty good. Play him well. Team has the lead, so just looking to mount a drive here that ends in the end zone. And all quarterbacks will tell you, hey, we love a running game, helps us out. But at the end of the day, they want to rely on their arm throw the football, feel good about things, keep things moving in the right direction. Right now, that's exactly what we're seeing. And we'll see if that continues. They'll come out throwing here on first down. 
He finds his man complete. It's Moore. And they're going to speed things up here. 2nd and 9 now. Flush to his right. He finds his man complete. It's Harrington. The coverage unit out there thinking pass on 3rd and 3. They're going to look to throw. Eluding the pressure right. Oh, that's into a double team, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Darius Leonard, the linebacker. A young quarterback, Charles, rolling to his right. I know he's right-handed, but is that one that maybe a veteran sticks in his pocket? I think so, but you have to remember with young quarterbacks, it may take a few years before they get all the stuff out of them that they did earlier in their career or even in their college days when they were used to being dominant. And that's going to be caught for a Browns touchdown. Gabriel Davis as time expires in the first half. And the Browns get a late touchdown here on the final play of the first half. And just before the half ends, the prayer is answered defensively a disaster there. I know often we're surprised when this actually works. I mean, the excitement level goes way up, but maybe we shouldn't be because I know as a defender, You've got to play the ball in this situation, but you can't interfere with the receiver because, remember, it's a spot foul, and it'd be first and goal if it happens in the end zone, and you don't want to give up that play. And that little bit of hesitancy often works really well for offensive guys. Okay, Brandon, time for a sprint to the finish as it's time to get you caught up with what's happening around the NFL here in a pivotal Week 15. We'll start up at MetLife Stadium in New Jersey, and it's the Steelers out in front in the second quarter. A touchdown run there for Javante Williams. From there, we're off to Tennessee to check on the Titans at home in Nashville. And they have the lead in that one over the visiting Indianapolis Colts. Jared Goff has a touchdown pass. Lastly, let's get to the Windy City. See what's happening with the Bears at home at Soldier Field. And they were winners as they defeat the visiting New England Patriots. Mike Evans, a touchdown catch in the victory. On to a look at the next-gen stats for the Browns in that first half. And they've definitely been able to exploit some holes in that opposing secondary as they threw for close to 200 yards in those first two. So I'm waltzing down Main Street, got an umbrella, just a torrential downpour, and I look over, and this guy, stone face, wearing a poncho that says, don't rain on my parade, and he is just angry. And... Uh, we got to go. I'll tell you. I'll tell you the rest later. Here we go. Third quarter. All right, coach. Thank you. And we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. So the halftime break behind us and we are back underway with a third quarter of action. Let's go. fellas. Here he is, the man taking the snaps under center, heading out for the next possession. And we have seen him to this point with four touchdowns. We get a glance at his work. It's been good work. Oh, it's been excellent work, and it's made so much better by our guys. Look at that montage of great plays <laughs> that they put together. Absolutely beautiful. I mean, you speak it pretty well. But these guys, the pictures they put up. The offense now at the line, ready for their next drive. Hey, Charles, they've got the lead. Put your coaching hat on here now. What's the game plan for the second half? I think it... the running game going a little bit more because I thought in the first half they didn't get it moving the way that they would like. They had success throwing it, but I think these first couple of drives, they'll want to get those running backs going and give them more opportunities, and I will guarantee you that those guys were lobbying for them in the locker room at halftime. And now we get into the psychology of the whole thing because a lot of teams with a two-score lead in the third quarter, they almost become defensive with their offense, just playing not to lose. 
I think with this team, you got to figure at this point, this is a great spot for them to go into attack mode, really try and put the hammer down and finish this one off. They'll look to throw now on first down. Open man here, Schwartz complete. And he'll work it across midfield inside the 45. So they were able to put the pin to the contract extension. And I'm sure that the coach's front office happy. He's got to be happy too, though. He's got to be relieved. He doesn't have to worry about moving now. Doesn't have to worry about not having a team. He's back with a team he's comfortable with and where he feels he belongs. Yeah, I think he feels pretty good about this whole deal. They've given up a few first downs on this drive, but getting the incompletion there, that should give them something to build on and maybe turn the tide. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. We all Again, he'll drop to throw. Oh, hit as he throws there, incomplete. Oh, that's got to frustrate him a little bit because they nearly got to him there, and it would have been the first sack of the game instead. They're able to influence the release, and they did force the incomplete pass. 53 is the mic. 53 is the mic. Hey, smash, Rocco. Big Dad, Big Dad. Go, Rick. Go. Checking, he's checking, he's checking. Crash, crash. Go. On third down, he'll drop to throw. He finds his man complete. That's Harrington. And finally out of bounds, just a few Let's yards go, short of the goal line at the three. It's a big play there on third down. After the big play, a chance to finish now on first and goal. They'll go with a keeper. And they'll get him down just shy of the goal line at about the one. Second and goal from the one. Watch the safety creep. Oh, now here's a whistle as flags come in. And we'll check out the call. Ball start. Offense. So that'll back him up five. Still second down. Things made a little more difficult after the false start as they try again on second and goal. And here's a handoff out of the gun. And he will fight his way into the end zone for a touchdown. A great play there. His second touchdown on the season. And the Huskies take the opening kickoff of the third quarter and drive right down the field to extend their lead. Extra point by McPherson up and good. And the lead is up to 18 now. And the Browns are able to cover this one up. Come on, fellas. They show run with three tight ends here on first down. Burrow on play action. Open man left side. It's a tight end, Tunyon. And he is out of bounds, but not before he's inside the 30. I'll tell you what, a lot of those mid-range throws have been available because sometimes teams get too concerned about the deep ball and they leave too much space in front of them. And these guys have been taking advantage so far. On first down, Carson stopped at the 24-yard line after a Here gain of five. That's a really nice, tough run oh, inside, and they gained five yards on it. And be frank about it, most offenses don't expect to get five yards on a play call like that. So when they do, they go back to their huddle with a little pep in their steps. They're starting to think that they're starting to dominate the line of scrimmage. Nice job there on the tackle. Keep him to the short gain. And, of course, he got some good news this week. He was named AFC Defensive Player of the Week from last week's effort. And part of the reason he got that award, because of plays like that. Not every play is spectacular. Not every... And he is into the end zone. Touchdown, Cleveland. Well, for Chris Carson, I mean, he is a powerfully built back and using that size and strength there to good advantage as he shakes free of a would-be tackler. And as a former defender, I can tell you with certainty... 
those are the ones that have you losing sleep at night. I would not like to be in that film room on Tuesday going over that one. Just a pretty poor effort defensively, and it leads to a big play. And the next-gen stat shows us the tale of how much yardage he was able to pick up after the initial contact. Pinheiro now to add the extra point. And that one makes this an 11-point deficit now. So that drive, four plays. And it was all capped off by the Chris Carson touchdown run. Now after the touchdown, here's Pinheiro to kick it off. And this will be brought out from the middle of the end zone. And the decision to bring it out, not a good one, go, as he's tackled it to 15. Toronto's offense ready to take over. Their lead down to two scores after the touchdown a moment ago as they start with a first and 10. Start the drive.
trouble here, and down he goes. Back at the eight-yard line. You better be ready. Dexter Lawrence in there to get him, and that is sack number six now for him on the year. Now, following the sack, they'll look to make amends on a second down and 17. I'm coming after you. Mike 54. Mike 54. Here we, here we go, D. He'll drop to throw. He's got room to run past the 20. And now off to the races, down the right side. And all the way I in for the touchdown. Anthony Schwartz, 92 yards. And the Huskies had six to their lead. Well, it doesn't matter where you put him, lined up in the backfield or split out like he was there. Uh, he can be a weapon when he gets that ball in his hands. And talk about a quick answer. This looked like a missed assignment. You'd think someone would be able to rein him in after he makes this catch. But he's so slippery in the open field, he's able to take it all the way to the end zone. Extra point by McPherson, up and good. And the lead is up to 18 now. The long touchdown pass gets him six on a very, very tidy two-play drive that time. After the touchdown, McPherson on to kick this one away. Dwayne Eskridge elects to bring it out. And beyond the 20, but not by much. In Come fact, on, just baby. a yard Let's pass go. there to the 21. Ready to take over again on offense. Out comes Cleveland. I guess they have to feel a little gratified to at least get on the board last time, but still work to do. No doubt about it. I wonder now if they're going to try to increase the urgency a little bit, maybe pump up the pace, maybe go two minute. Who knows? Let's we'll see what they decide to do. Here's a handoff to Carson to begin the drive. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. 73 yards for him on the ground now as he has been terrific here this afternoon. Despite the score, despite the deficit, no quitting this guy. He's running angry, running through arm tackles. He wants to change what that scoreboard is saying. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. Now it's Carson. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. Yeah, I don't know if it's exactly a win-win, but if you're on offense, you'll take that kind of a run, all right? It was kind of stacked up, found a little bit of yardage, and frankly, they're pretty close to staying on schedule on offense. The playbook is still open for the coordinator. Yeah, that play is blown up, losing yardage back at the 35. Now they're staring at a third and eight. That last play backwards a yard. Mike nine. Mike nine. Strip the ball. Strip that ball. Now Burrow. Hey, we got a seal. We got a seal. Into a double team and it's intercepted. Picked off by Caleb Farley. And his crew will take hey, over with a football at the 35-yard line. Uh, certainly not his best throw that time and not a good time to make it, Charles, when they were a nickel with five defensive backs on the field. And that's exactly why you have those five DBs out there. You want extra speed on the field, guys who have ball skills and understand what the passing game can do and gives them a chance to react and make a play on the football, and they take one of those away. Out comes this field general once more, leading his offense back onto the field. And nobody in the stadium feels better than he does right now. Just a slew of touchdown passes. He's been spectacular. And you and I both know this is a team game, one of the best team games that's out there. But right now, I watching what he's doing been fun that's 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 been mesmerizing and a whole lot of fun to watch he's hoping to keep it going here in the third quarter they'll try and start this drive in the air and he will find his man schwartz that's complete touchdown 
Anthony Schwartz, 65 yards. And the Huskies get another third quarter touchdown to add on to that lead. But for as big and strong as some of these guys are, especially when you see them in full pads, it is sometimes hard to appreciate how truly fast they can move. That was incredible. Well, in this league where coordinators worry so much about drawing up the right routes, blocking assignments, misdirections and stuff, they have these precise arrows and movements. Sometimes the best plays just come from the schoolyard where you look at your fastest guy and say, go long, go get it, big man. Extra point by McPherson, up and good. And they open the lead up now to 25. And the Browns are able to cover this one up. Good work, boys. Let's go. Let's go. And the football going back over now to the Cleveland Browns. And following the interception, just any interception, are you a little bit more cautious when you start that next drive, or no, you just throw that out the window? I think you are. I don't think that there's any way you can run back out there and go, ah, totally didn't affect me. Let's just go ahead and be loose with the football again. You're going to take care of it, but you have to be careful about being too cautious because now you can't run any offense at all. Still want to attack. We'll see how they attack him here. And he gets it inside the 35 and just shy of the 30. 86 yards rushing for him now with a couple of touchdown runs to boot from the 32 now. Here's first and 10. He runs, he runs, he runs. 44 is the mic, 44 is the mic. Check, check. They're passing here, Joe Burrow. His throw incomplete. Let's face it, if you want to get back into the game, these are the kind of throws you got to hit. He's wide open right there. Got to be able to get it to him, don't you think? And those are the throws that haven't been available to them every time he's dropped a pass. Yeah, that's a big miss. So after the incompletion on first, now second and 10. Now it's Burrow. And this will go to Carson out wide. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. Well, maybe this offense has learned something from watching their counterparts work. I'm wondering if their coaching staff said, let's do what they've been doing the entire game because that's worked well. This offense, they have not looked. Touchdown, Browns. Gabriel Ola, Davis, Ola. his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Browns are able to cut into this deficit here in the final minute of the third. Well, if you've got him in your fantasy league, you like his production, his second touchdown of the game. But right now, his team is trailing. Fortunately, he's playing pretty well and trying to keep him in it. Yeah, they might need a little more from him here. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if they continue to call his number. Right now, he needs his defense to step up and give him a chance. Pinheiro now to add the extra point. And that'll cut the lead down now to 18. A drive there of just four plays. And it ends with a touchdown for Cleveland. Now after the touchdown, here's Pinheiro to kick it off. And here comes a return from the middle of the end zone. Oh, a dangerous return man showing it here. And he is out of bounds as they'll start up past the 30. 
The offense back out there at the line, ready for their next drive. And following that long touchdown pass, a one-play drive last time, we'll see if the defense, you, you know they're ready. They don't want that to happen again. And you would have thought they would have been ready the yeah, last true. time. That's I true. mean, that's what you work on all the time. Make sure that no one gets behind you. That's the cardinal sin of defense, not giving up the long pass. They did. Let's see how they adjust. A good gain on first, has them set up with second and just a couple of inches now from the 29. And as they come to the line, they will not be able to get off another play as time has run out on this third quarter. You are watching the NFL on EA Sports. Second down and inches. Toward the sideline, and he will have the first down as he was oh, able to keep it, the baby. feet in Let's bounds. Charles, you said earlier this defense is probably going to need to hold these guys right around 20 or under that if they were going to have a chance. It was evident pretty early on that wasn't going to happen. Yeah, they left 20 behind a long time ago in this game, didn't they? It looks like they're headed towards a big, big number. But and he's taken down. This will be a Brown sack. And now it looks like they're going to be in the hurry up. Right there, right there. 54 Mike. They'll look to throw here, escaping the pressure right. And his throw here is incomplete. That one doesn't find its target, but all in all, he's been much sharper this week. He was under 50% a week ago, and now he's up over 70%. Well, you know it's standard for quarterbacks and receivers to get together for a little extra time each and every day in practice. I get the sense they got together for a lot of extra time this week to try and improve that passing percentage, and it's worked out quite well. Now a shot taken on third down, but it's going to wind up incomplete. Last stop! Last stop! Well, they've had success getting the ball to him out of the backfield, but this time they had a man right on him. He was able to break that play up before he could get started. And with things looking pretty good on the scoreboard, they're going to keep the offense out there and go for it here on fourth. He'll look to throw. And that is caught. He's got his running back downfield. And he's going to get this one down to the edge of the red zone. Back to throw again. Pressure applied, and he's going to be taken down. They sack him back at the 33-yard line. They'll look to throw. Oh, there's that man again. It's complete. And they will eventually get him down, but he's inside the five all the way to the three. A big play that time through the air. 30 yards. No let up in this passing game. They've been a well-oiled machine throughout. And actually saw a few guys on the sidelines at the end of the third quarter doing the old hold up four fingers college sign, meaning the fourth quarter is ours. And they certainly weren't kidding. And he'll keep working toward that end zone as he's down to about the two-yard line. Only a yard on the keeper, and it'll be second down. It's a quarterback sneak, and they'll get him down just shy of the goal line at about the one. A big play forthcoming. Here's third and goal. And he is over the line for another rushing touchdown. Is he a quarterback or is he a tailback? A great effort there with now his second touchdown of this third quarter. And the Huskies look like they're going to get back in the win column as they extend their lead here in this fourth quarter.
And McPherson on for the extra point. And they open the lead up now to 25 points. A pretty long drive that time. 11 plays all told. And it was capped off by the quarterback sneak for six. Oh, a little cruel here. They're going to go for the onside kick up big. And the Browns are able to cover this one up. And just shutting him off there. Well, fourth quarter, they felt like they needed go, the football back. Go. Unfortunately, they couldn't get it. And I know we brought analytics into the game, and someone has said here that the data says that when a team's expecting an onside kick, 80% of the time, the team expecting it, they do actually recover the ball, which is what we saw here. I just wonder if that number is much more of a anecdotal type of a number. Kind of like when the coaches tell us, well, when you score on special teams, 93% of the time you win the game. I'm still waiting to see that number is empirical. Here's a pass swung out left to his running back. And he'll lose yardage on the play back at the 45-yard line. That one unable to develop, never got going. A loss of a couple at its second down. Well, Brandon, we could see that play developing, and they were hoping that he was going to be able to put a move on the first guy and turn it into a big play. But no such luck. The speed on defense continues to get better and better in the NFL. Pretty nice example there of those guys being able to run from their assignments and finish off that play. And Burrow going to be hit and taken down. They got him. Micah Parsons able to disrupt yet another pass play. That is his third sack of the afternoon. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. Campbell making the catch. They do get 10 back, but still a ways to go on fourth. Now here's a timeout coming on the defensive side of the ball. It's just their first. They'll be down to two remaining as we step aside here in the fourth quarter. That is caught. It's the tight end, Tunyon. Touchdown, Robert Tunyon with his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Browns' decision to go for it pays off with six points. For a big tight end, he can sure move like a slot receiver when he gets ahead of steam going. And as a defensive back, you've got a big decision to make when he's moving like that. You don't want to get them. Pinheiro now to add the extra point. And that'll cut the lead down now to 18. Just a four-play drive that time. And it's capped off by the Browns' touchdown. So still lots of work left to do, but here comes the onside kick. And before this play happens, we're going to get a timeout here. That's going to leave them with just one remaining here in this fourth quarter. So still lots of work left to do, but here comes the onside kick. And the hands team does its job. They're able to secure it.
got this. Toronto's offense ready to take over. They had to go a long way on their last drive to score the touchdown. This time, they get at least a little bit more of a cushion with field position. I have to think that with this field position, after what they did on the last drive, they might want to take a shot right now and try and cut down the length of the drive. 53 to Mike. 53. Check 53. Get your swerve on. Now on first down, he'll drop to throw it. Got an open man at Schwartz. And a huge play that time. Boy, another big play late here for an offense, Charles. It certainly has had its fair share of big plays. Coverage has been a problem all game long. And I would say that going along with that has been confidence. Because even if they had the right coverage, they still dented them. And now it's been a real issue for them during this game. So it's our home team here in possession of the football as we come back. They've got it first and goal in a game that appears. And he is over the line for another rushing touchdown. Is he a quarterback or is he a tailback? The sneak successful from a yard out. And the Huskies are closing in on a ninth victory on the year as they extend their lead. He keeps carrying the ball into the end zone. And in this one, he's sort of carrying the team on his back. He's the reason that they lead right now. No question about it. And you talk about on his back. He's not minding the extra weight at all, is he? Carrying that just as lightly as he does the football. Yeah, those, what a great performance so far. Those three touchdowns. It's got him in the lead. Extra point by McPherson. Up and good. And they open the lead up now to 25. And the Browns are able to cover this one up. Come on now, let's go. Over the goal. Hold him up. Here comes the Browns offense back onto the field. Let's just be frank. They're playing for pride at this point. <laughs> that's that's all that's left because victory not a chance now and I can't wait to see how they actually go about doing it because there are a lot of people watching the body language of the guys on the field now and if they call plays they want executed they need to do that and do it really well otherwise there could be repercussions we'll see how they handle the waning moments of this one. one oh, he was hit as he threw it there and that one winds up incomplete so now second and ten after the incompletion on first down Out of the gun, it's Burrow. And Burrow going to be hit and taken down. They got him. Micah Parsons. Who else? He's in there for his fourth sack of the afternoon. We've been around this league for a while, and many coaches never pull their starting quarterback, almost no matter the situation. In this case, though, I think he's got to make a decision. He's taking a pretty good beating out there. Yeah, and with the deficit, maybe not wanting to risk an injury. Now Joe Burrow on third and long. Over the middle, he finds Eskridge. Look at this, middle of the field, a breakaway. Touchdown, he's on, Browns. He's on it, baby. Dwayne Eskridge, his first touchdown on the year. And the Browns get a score closer. Pinheiro now to add the extra point. And that'll cut the lead down now to 18. The drive there only spanning three plays. And it ends with a touchdown for Cleveland. So still lots of work left to do, but here comes the onside kick. Now the defense will burn their third and final timeout. 
as he'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. So still lots of work left. to do but here comes the onside kick and this one won't bounce their way it's covered up by the hands team now a crease here as he's past the 30 let's go boys bring it up The offense now at the line, ready for their next drive. And a few kneel downs should come very close to finishing this one off, depending on whether or not we see any defensive timeouts. They still have two, but using them would just be prolonging what's really already been decided. The throw down the field caught by his running back. And they're going to get this beyond the 40 before he's taken down. That's the run. They're running it. 53 to that one looks like he'll throw here. Open man here, Schwartz complete. And he almost made it, but just short. Let's finally out of go. bounds, right Defense. down around the goal line. And they rattle off a big one. And I think that's a pretty good illustration of why they try to get the football into his hands out of the backfield. That was something else. And I'll tell you what, what a bird's eye view I've got here because that was absolutely something else to watch. Not a lot of wiggle in that. That was catch it and go. And he used those wheels of his. Absolute devastating effect. And the next-gen stats are going to tell the story. And wow, what a story it is. Nearly a full 23 miles an hour. One of the fastest. Fastest plays on record, folks. Extra point by McPherson, up and good. And they open the lead up now to 25. And the Browns are able to cover this one up. Let's go. Let's do this. down here's burrow he's going to take a shot right away for the end zone toward the back corner of the end zone but he could not get the feet down this will wind up incomplete second and ten here's burrow setting up to throw it he'll air this one out deep for davis and at the seven-yard line, the catch is made. Touchdown! Gabriel Davis 
His third touchdown of the game, 10th on the year. And the Browns make some inroads here on that deficit. Point after, right down the middle. And that'll cut the lead down to 18. Pretty clean and simple there. Just two plays, the long pass resulting in the touchdown on play number two. Now after the touchdown, here's Pinheiro to kick it off. This one fielded at the five. And not a very good return at all as he won't even get this all back day, to the 15. Toronto's offense ready to take over. They have the dream scenario you hope for coming into the game. Just one kneel here, and this game should be over. And it's always the final play of preparation each week. The practicing of the kneel down formation, the victory formation. We've got a game in hand, and that's all they're going to want to do now. They'll put someone back deep just in case something goes haywire. But all in all, take the snap, kneel down, and, and shake hands. Yes, get out of there. And he works it across the 25 before being tackled. Back to throw now on first down. He's going to loft one deep over the middle. It got his man complete. Touchdown. Touchdown. Anthony Schwartz, 72 yards. And the Huskies are able to stretch out their lead. McPherson on for the point after. And they open the lead up now to 25 points. The long touchdown pass gets him six on a very, very tidy two-play drive that time. And the Browns are able to cover this one up. A final shot now for Burrow. One last shot at the end zone. And that will be incomplete. They were going for a consolation TD, but it was not to be. And time has run out now on this game. A big offensive explosion helped leading them to victory. And the defensive guys, they're just saying, hey, put those points up every week. We'll just keep winning. They will gratefully accept them, won't they? It makes their job that much easier when they're scoring.